How's it going, Internet? John from Zebra Technologies here, and we're back once again to talk about some advanced functionality. Some of it's new, some of it's been with us for a long old while, but all of it adds up to some pretty clever trickery that can really add some value when we're talking about a shared device deployment situation. Today, we're going to be talking about persistence, and not in the, hey John, why do you persist in making these videos kind of sense. We're going to be focusing instead on persisting settings and applications in Android across an enterprise data wipe. More importantly, we're going to take a look at what that means for being able to do things like remotely rebuild a device in the field. And of course, the bedrock for the whole discussion is my favorite little utility, Zebra Technologies Stage Now. We're going to start with a bit of a history lesson. So if you're not interested in that, then go ahead and skip ahead to this timestamp right here. If you're still with me, if we wind the clock all the way back to the early days of enterprise mobile computing, we had to be really clever in order to get around some memory limitations. If you can't remember, and if you can believe it, once upon a time, every application, every piece of data was installed into RAM. So if we lost power or you rebooted your device, you lost everything. So we made some clever innovations back then which have stuck with us over the years and resulted in a folder that would persist across a reboot or a wipe. A folder that we could use to rebuild a device from, give us a clean and validated start point. This had an unexpected benefit where originally we were just trying to make sure devices would come back online if they weren't charged over the weekend. Eventually, we started to see this feature being used to rebuild devices out in the field, to wipe them of any weirdness that might arise in a shared device situation. Now, if we snap back to 2020, today, while science has still regrettably failed to deliver my hoverboard, nonetheless, we've made some real progress when it comes to what the average mobile computer can do within the enterprise space. But we've kept that persistent store, and there's some cases where making use of it can really be beneficial. When it comes to rebuilding a device out in the field, the gold standard is to utilize Android Enterprise Zero Touch. By notifying the Google infrastructure of your devices and your EMM, as soon as a device comes online, it'll check in, enroll, and automatically start deploying your applications. If we trigger an enterprise data wipe on one of these devices, it'll reboot, reset, and immediately start to re-enroll, precisely the kind of behavior that we want. As I've mentioned in the past, Zero Touch is really hard to beat when it comes to regular WAN devices, but it can be tricky if we're dealing with Wi-Fi only devices or customers that utilize a custom APN to connect to the internet. Suddenly, we've got to interact with those devices quite a bit in order to get them just connected. And to be fair, not every customer has signed up with a Zero Touch partner, so we need to take care of those guys too. We'll start by looking at simplifying things for those more complicated zero touch customers. First up, it's important to note that this feature is a new one. It's only available on StageNow version 4.2 and for devices running MX10 and above. Anything else, it simply won't show up in your user interface. Even more importantly, the new feature is a wizard. Accessing this is super intuitive and easy. So over to stage now, and once you've logged into administrator mode, you just click create new profile, set your MX target to 10.0 or above. And from here on out, it's as simple as clicking the wizard for configure zero touch network and following the prompts. You'll note that the first option is to choose your network type. It's pretty intuitive here. If we're using a custom APN for a private WAN connection, select WAN cellular. If we're setting up Wi-Fi, choose that option. And if all we wanna do is exercise some control over our ethernet cradles, go with that option. I'm going to be using Wi-Fi in this example, and at the next step, it's as though I'm setting up a regular or old wireless LAN connection. If you've been following along at home, you'll already be pretty familiar with this step. The important part, though, is the persist zero touch network step. This is where the magic happens, regardless of which network type we've chosen. So we select yes to proceed with persisting this new network, and then you'll note that the user interface asks us to enter three values. We stage now again, it's best not to overthink things. The persistence name is just that. It's the name of the XML document that will be persisted associated with this profile. The hint's a pretty good one, so let's stick with zero touch network. The version is a system associated value. And again, it's quite literally the version number of this XML document. We'll leave that at one, and you'll only ever really need to change that if you're playing with iterations of persisted XML. Finally, there's the reapply order. This is a value where if we have multiple persistent settings in the persistent memory store, the system will know which order to reapply them in. 
In this way, we could set up multiple persistent networks, Wi-Fi and WAN, for example, and tell the system to apply Wi-Fi first, and then WAN, and so on and so forth. Since we're only dealing with the one persistent setting for now, we can leave this value at one. Now, when I scan the barcode for the profile that we've just created, the network will be permanently set up on my device, as long as I only ever enterprise reset it. You can still perform a full factory reset like we did back in my first video to completely erase a unit. So remember, an enterprise reset will wipe a device with the exception of the persistent store. A factory reset is your nuclear option. What we've just done is absolutely perfect for zero touch customers. But let's look at what we can do for unmanaged customers, potentially, where we're manually taking care of applications and support files. Many customers still use Telnet, so wouldn't it be cool if we could tell their units to reconnect to Wi-Fi and magically still have their Telnet settings after a reset? For these customers, the workflow changes a little bit, where if we're not using persistence, I would just create a single staging profile to connect to Wi-Fi and download the target files to my destination folder, we don't want that file download step happening every time. So we kind of need to break things up. We need to do an initial staging profile where files are copied into the persistent store and then a subsequent persistent profile to confirm your Wi-Fi settings and copy the files from the persistent folder to their ultimate target directory. So let's build something out for one of these customers. Someone with a small fleet of MC9300, say, that is primarily using Telnet, but has other applications where they may want to periodically trigger an enterprise reset. Using Stage Now, I've already copied my host config files for Avanti Velocity over to my enterprise storage folder. So let's look at what we need to do to get those files reapplied after that enterprise reset finishes. So for this, we're going to create a new profile using expert mode once again. We want to add three things for this case. Wi-Fi Manager for Wi-Fi, File Manager for the file copy, and Persist Manager to flag the whole thing as persistent. Now we just follow the steps. We set up Wi-Fi exactly as we've done before, and when it comes to the file copy step, we want to select a file in the device file system and then select others from the drop-down menu. The persistent folder on a Zebra mobile computer is slash enterprise slash USR slash persist, and that's where I've copied my support file to previously. Remember, if you get yourself in trouble, a factory reset will wipe all storage and get us properly back to square one. The persist manager step functions much as it did above, so we stick with adding the current XML as a persistent profile, we give it a name and a version, and we set the order to one. If we check persist if error, that will ensure that the profile is still persisted regardless of whether or not stage now encounters any error conditions in the staging process. So let's keep that blank. That's all there is to it. Now, in cases where we might be performing more complex acts of persistence or where an EMM may be using the persistent framework to persist the agent across a, a reboot, there's one more power tip that we want to keep in mind. And that's when we trigger the enterprise reset, we want to do so after first raising a system flag. Because we find in some cases that the whole persistent framework can get thrown off or we get inconsistent behavior if a device is sitting at the Android setup wizard. So when we trigger that enterprise reset, we want to tell the system to bypass that wizard when it comes back up. And we do that in the power manager when we create our enterprise reset barcode. This is another feature under expert mode. So we create a new expert profile, add in a power manager, and from the OS action, we select enterprise reset. Here, you'll notice that there's an option that allows us to select whether or not we want to bypass the GMS welcome screen. All we need to do is set that to true. And if you want to trigger that enterprise reset remotely, just consult your EMM vendor for their best practices. I've only really skimmed the surface of what we can do with persistence today, but these three cases are really the ones you're most likely to encounter. It's super flexible, really powerful, and with any luck, it'll save you some time and headaches. For now though, thanks again for watching. Keep on being excellent, and I'll catch you all in the next video.